Hello, my name is Ryan. Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be looking at five ways that we can actually prolong the lifespan of our battery pack. So let's get started. If you're anything like me, you love the hobby so much that you have a wide range of RC applications. They also may use different style battery packs. You may have some smaller battery packs, you may have some medium sized battery packs, you may even have some larger battery packs. Now the one thing that we must do is prolong the lifespan of these battery packs so that we don't have to go and buy all these different battery packs every single year. We generally are looking to get about three years on average of the battery pack. And of course, if you have an application that draws a lot more power, for example, radio controlled electric ducted fan jets or radio controlled fast electric boats, you may not actually see the three years. It might be something a little bit shorter because you're pushing these battery packs very hard. On the other hand, if you have scale electric boats or trainer style uh, airplanes, you may be able to see upwards of five plus years out of your lithium battery pack. However, on average, you're looking at about that three year mark. So let's see how you can actually prolong the lifespan regardless of your application. At the number one spot to prolong your radio control battery pack is to look at the maximum discharge rate. Now when we're talking about the maximum discharge rate, I created a video on this, it is the C rating. All battery packs have a C rating associated with them and specifically we're looking at the continuous discharge C rating. That is the one that we're referring to. What you wanna to do to prolong the lifespan of the battery pack is to draw no more than 50% of that rating. So if you're looking at a battery pack that can withstand 100 amps continuously, your load should be not more than 50 amps in order to maximize the lifespan. And of course, you can also push that beyond the 50% mark. You can draw 30 amps, 20 amps. This will also increase the lifespan as well because you're not pushing your battery pack that hard. At the number two spot is the maximum discharge capacity or the runtime. They're closely related. So when we're talking about the maximum discharge, we're talking about the milliamp hour of your battery pack. And generally what you can do is follow the 80-20 rule that revolves around this parameter. What that really is, is 80% being the amount of capacity that you can discharge from your battery pack. So for example, if your battery pack was a 1000 milliamp hour pack and you're looking at 80% discharge, you're going down to about 200 milliamp hour. So that means 800 milliamp hour is the 80% discharge. On the flip side of that, the 20% side of the rule refers to the amount, the absolute minimum amount of capacity that should be remaining in your battery pack. And of that same 1000 milliamp hour example, you're looking at 200 milliamp hour. Now remember, this is a maximum and a minimum. The maximum is the maximum you can discharge from that battery. That is the 80% and the minimum is 20%. You should not go beyond this. If you had that 1000 milliamp hour pack and you're discharging 90% out of it, you are going to degrade the lifespan of your battery pack. The best rule to follow here is the 80-20 rule in terms of your runtime. So you'll wanna go and make sure you set up your radio control application so you know how much time you have to run that specific vehicle whether it's an airplane, you know how long you can fly around, or a boat, you know how much you can drive around in terms of a time in order to not exceed these parameters. At the number three spot is the storage parameter of a lithium battery pack. If you're looking at prolonging life and you typically have to store your battery pack, I know I have to through winter, this is a perfect example, it is stored more than the seven to 10 day period. That's where I have to closely follow this rule. What I wanna be doing in terms of storage is bringing the battery pack at a storage voltage. The storage voltage that I'm gonna specify is 3.8 to about 3.85 volts. Now you can, have, you can do this either two ways. You can either do it by an automated system within your charger or you can do it the second way, which is of course manually. Either way works, either way is reliable. One might be easier than the other, of course. Your automated charger, you know, it does it itself where you can just plug your battery pack in, set the mode, and then the charger itself will take the battery pack either from a, a fully charged state or, or uh, the opposite, 
and it'll bring it down to that specific voltage. So if you're looking at the boat, the 3.8 to 3.85, your charger will do that automatically for you. If you want to do it manually, then of course you'd have to either set the voltage that you want it to discharge to, and you can have that done so that it'll land at that specific amount and then measure it afterwards so that you know that you're at that specific voltage. You'll probably end up seeing the capacity going down to about 40 to 45 percent. That's approximately where the 3.8 to 3.85 volts would be. The absolute worst thing that you can do for your battery pack in terms of storage is storing them at 100% capacity. That would be the worst thing to do in terms of storage. You want to make sure that you're taking the voltage of that pack away from the maximum voltage to about 3.8 to 3.85. If you're storing your battery packs at 4.2, you could actually degrade the lifespan at such a rapid rate that it is not usable come the next season. So make sure you're following this storage rule. It is very important to follow and very easy to do. Some intelligent batteries, such as in the DJI Phantom, it will actually do this if you leave the battery pack on the shelf for a little bit. I know the Phantom 4 that I have, if I leave the battery pack in a 100% mode, it starts almost the next day at slowly discharging that battery pack at an extremely small rate where it takes like almost seven days to get there, but it'll slowly discharge to the storage voltage. And that is a way that DJI is able to prolong the lifespan of the battery pack so that people, you know, don't end up complaining if they degrade it and don't know how to, or didn't know of all these rules to follow. So there you have it. Let's look at the number four way that we can actually prolong the lifespan of our lithium battery pack. Now the fourth way is the maximum discharge temperature. So we're referring to the temperature in which we're using the battery pack at. Now it doesn't matter about any of the other parameters that we talked about if this one is not being followed. It doesn't matter if you're discharging the pack at, you know, 20% the loaded C rating. That's irrelevant if your battery pack is getting high. Now, there's many reasons to why it might be getting high in temperature. That's not for this video, but uh, if it is getting hot, that is not good. Heat is what kills all electrical components, and it's no different for your radio control lithium battery pack. Heat also kills the battery packs themselves too. So what you want to do is make sure that the absolute maximum temperature that you see in your battery pack is 60 degrees Celsius or 140 Fahrenheit. Now, that is a maximum. If you constantly run your battery pack up to that temperature, you are more than likely degrading the lifespan of your battery pack. If you're able to reduce that temperature, you're gonna prolong the lifespan of your battery pack. It's really that simple. If you keep it a little bit cooler, it's gonna last a little bit longer. If you're making it get extremely hot, it's probably gonna degrade faster. So you wanna make sure that you keep your battery pack cooler, I recommend a maximum of 140 Fahrenheit, but more typically you'll want to get it as cool as possible. And there's multiple ways that you can reduce the load on the battery pack um, in order to get there. Now the last way that we're able to prolong the life of our lithium battery pack is by looking at the battery's charge rate and also peak voltage. Uh, when you charge it. So the battery pack charge rate generally these days you'll see anywhere from 1C uh, up to 5C and of course I do see a couple battery packs that are you know rated at 10C and maybe even higher than that. Um, I honestly think that 10C these days is absolutely crazy. I would not charge at a rate of 10C. I don't even like charging at 5C and I think I've only done it a couple times on a very cheap battery pack that probably fits in the size of my, on my finger. Um, I wouldn't want to do that on expensive battery packs. Generally, if you know, you're trying to charge really quickly so you can get back out there and fly or drive or do whatever you're trying to do in terms of your RC application. So you wanna charge them quickly, but also if you wanna prolong the lifespan, you'll wanna reduce the amount of charge rate. I would say that the great balance between these two things is about 2C charge rate. So if you have a five amp hour pack, charging at no more than 10 amps is my recommendation. Now, if you're gonna end up charging at about five amps, the one C, that is probably the best that you can possibly do for your pack. If you're charging at rates of five C or more, you're gonna definitely degrade the life of your battery pack. Make sure you keep that charge rate as low as, it, as you can allow in order to prolong the lifespan. Now the last thing that we have to talk about that's closely related to the charging sequence of the battery pack is that peak voltage. So the peak voltage of a radio control lithium battery pack, a standard one, is going to be 4.20 volts, and that's of course per cell. 
when we're charging up to 4.20 volts per cell, that actually degrades the lifespan of the battery pack. It is the specification of the battery pack, but if you actually wanna get more life out of it, don't charge to 100%. It's almost like the same thing that Tesla does. You know, they, they recommend not charging right to 100%, charge to that 95%. The reason why they do that is because that's another way that we're able to prolong the life of the battery pack. So if you're looking at bringing that battery pack up to 95%, you know, somewhere around 4.15, volts or so, that would also prolong the lifespan of your battery pack. Uh, if you even go a little bit lower than that, you know, at the 4.12 or 4.1, uh, you can also increase the lifespan of your battery pack just a little bit further. Now, the way that you go about doing this is either stopping your charge while it's kind of ramping down. So each charger does a constant current, constant voltage sequence. It does constant current for the time that it's under the 4.2. Once it hits 4.2 volts, it does constant voltage by maintaining the 4.2 volts until current goes and drops off to zero. Usually, as soon as I see the battery pack ramping down, I'll usually kill it. At that point, I know that I got a really high amount of percent in terms of capacity in there. I know that my runtime is limited so that I'm not discharging more than 80%. So out of all these things covered, now, now I know that I'm able to you know, prolong the lifespan of the battery pack and I'm only really sacrificing um, a few percent or a, maybe you know a few seconds of runtime when you look at it. Again, nothing is for free. So every time you're, you're trying to do one thing, you're sacrificing another thing. Uh, that's just the way life goes all over the place, no matter what we're talking about. Uh, but in this case, if you're really ultimately looking for the maximum lifespan of a lithium battery pack, these are the five things that you have to follow. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing so that I can see you in that next video. Thank you for watching.